Well, hello everyone. It's Dave Herman, alias Daz, the artist, who has no idea what he's going to do for a career now in the advanced age. But uh, tonight we're going to add a little more drawing. So what I've done, while you guys weren't watching, let me turn off these uh, layers. I brought up my original drawing and it has a disc in the upper right hand corner I created for my own entertainment to place the arm which will be uh, designed to look like uh, a multiverse arm like his head and body but have uh, rotating and, and strange elements like an insect arm or tarsus fingers and components of an insect arm. So first thing I did was I did a sketch like this, just you know using a online reference, uh, and I can even use my imagination for things like this. But I started with a reference, just of an extended uh, insect arm, by typing in tibia and tarsus of an insect, and then I kind of uh, have that above the head, so like that's the hand of the creature, and then the, the like off screen, a joint where it turns and becomes vertical now, coming down into the body shoulder or something. And then from that, I added um, white. And before I added the white, let me turn this off, I added a couple of scratchy lines and stuff, which would be um, so this layer here, we can move down, grab it. This, sometimes it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Okay, there we go. And we want to put that under the white. And so the white is on top of these things. And you just turn that on, see? So. Now you kind of have, I didn't do this on camera because this is kind of boring. Now I'm going to work it up, but I just wanted to show you how I think it out. And now I take the disc, I turn off the disc, I turn on my sketch. And, uh, you know, whatever else went into that sketch. Uh, this actually is really irrelevant, these two, uh, this little thing here. So I started something and when I'm not looking... It does what it does. Sometimes they, uh, they'll they jump a layer for you. <laughs> and um, so I want to grab that and take it down to the trash is what I want to do. So I get rid of that completely. See, nothing is affected on the screen. I can turn the disc off and on. And I can also add the white. And I can turn off the blue. See? So I have these options. And now I'm going to save this the way I like that. File, save. Okay. So we're going to turn off the disk for a moment. And start working. So I'm going to, I did this rough sketch. And now I'll show you how I kind of, I'm going to put another layer up there. Right above. And I'll work on that layer, but maybe when I put down color, it'll jump above that. And then I don't use that layer. See, it's kind of, it's kind of funky how you get used to these things. And this is Affinity Designer. I just love the program. Okay. But I don't represent them or anybody. You know, I just tell you what I'm working in. And I'm starting, now that we've been uh, self-quarantined more so than I normally am as a uh, independent guy living by himself, uh, you know, doing tattooing. Uh, I actually retired, but semi-retired. I would, uh, I'm completely isolated. <laughs> I mean, I get out and I take a bike ride through the city and I see human beings in the little city I live in, which is called Olympia, Washington, so that I don't completely go stark raving mad. But, uh, see, now we're going to change the opacity while I'm talking here. It's coming out solid. And the flow, I always like it about a third of my opacity. So... Even a quarter is better, like that. So then I can control the, how much, you know, pigments there. And this doesn't bother me because I'll lighten it up or, you know, I can do whatever I want in different colors. So we're throwing down a little bit of this uh, fuchsia. 
And then I'm going to show you another trick I do. You can hear fireworks out there. Today is July 4th. Uh, and America is celebrating something. I don't know what <laughs> this crazy world we're living in. Uh, it is crazy. No politics today. Okay. So there's red. And uh, what's this? See, like I could just go right over like that, just so you know. It's not like I'm locked into something and I can erase by putting on the eraser. And then you can do some cool stuff. So say you wanted to get rid of, you know, sketchy stuff, you go down to the blue layer and you just kind of erase that, see. But you had a guide to get started. And that's, that's the cool thing. And then you can leave your pigment and some of the blue if you like how it fits your guide or something like that or uh, you know kind of run it around the perimeter like that and uh, we'll leave this because I'm not done actually I can probably uh, boot I can probably completely turn that layer off let's go turn it off that's great and I'm gonna throw that layer out because I really don't need that layer anymore that's kind of what I do I try and keep everything at a minimum And sometimes you're just grabbing things. So double click, grab, trash. Come on. Trash. Boom. Trash. There we go. Boom. Okay. So I didn't need that layer, see. So I'll turn that and I'll save that. I don't have that layer anymore. Now I've got the start of this tarsus looking arm that's sort of robotic looking and kind of exhibits uh, like a vertical stem of a plant even because I try and mix animal vegetable mineral kingdoms in my thinking and you see my uh, creature is squeezing a hummingbird out of his head and in the side of the body of the hummingbird is something that looks like the eye of the creature so I'm trying to uh, subliminally suggest an intimate connection between the two even though it's made this wonderful organic creature. It's about to launch into the realm of whatever. <laughs> There's some kind of mark, the maker's mark. I like to call it that. Okay, so we're back to uh, the brush. And you will hear from time to time some uh, fireworks, which I thought would be kind of cool to do something on the 4th of July, right? So am I in brush? I'm in brush. I'm in color. So color uh, freaked us out. So we're going to go like this and we're going to go like this. Color chooser. And then um, there's a way to get the triangle back, but right now it's escaping me. So we won't worry about that. Let me see one second. You. Uh, there we go. And the color wheel. There we go. Okay, so that's how you do that in Affinity Designer. And uh, that's a nice one there. So let's leave that there and let's start thinking about. So if I go to the left of the color wheel, since I started with fuchsia, <gasps> pardon me, it is now uh, 10 o'clock where I'm living in the evening. I kind of did a bunch of errands and stuff today, so I didn't get the drawing at all. Uh, to the left, it's cooler, and to the right, it gets warmer. So let's go a little cooler. Let's get into the blues. Pick a nice shade, maybe here, and see how that works when we lay down some blue. So I'm going to... Sometimes these things just have a mind of their own. There we go. All right. So we're in this, and we're in blue... And we're on the wrong layer. What layer are we on? We're not on a layer. So we're going to this layer, and we're going to put a new layer. And there we go. And the reason I, I stress layers, uh, of course, like every artist, is it helps you be non-destructive. So say I did this blue, and somebody wanted to buy a print or something one day, should they ever want my work. 
Uh, and they say, I would really like that if that was a green tint, you know. Well, I could go back and turn that layer off and then do a green one. So whatever's relevant to you to separate, you separate, you know. And that's called being non-destructive. So you can go back and work it. And one thing about Affinity Designers, there's so many ways to tackle problems. You know, I've only been into it for a year. Um, if it was a work situation where I had to do everything, you know, uh, I would have learned all these options faster. But since it's just me freelancing and drawing and sometimes throwing things up on ArtStation or my my other uh, site that I just started where you could buy like an illustration on a bathrobe or you could buy it on a shower curtain or you could get it on a keychain or something. That is www.tarsus, T-A-R-S-U-S dot threadless, T-H-R-E-A-D-L-E-S-S dot com. So if you want to buy items with my art on it, I have started that. I haven't put a ton of work into it, but there's, uh, you know, maybe eight illustrations you can buy all kinds of ways. There's face masks or handbags or shower curtains or banners, uh, like you got in a sushi bar kind of banner. You know, all that stuff is really cool. Very, very cool. And uh, let me just see something here. This is the color wheel which I like but I'm surprised it's so big so that's good let me see if I can actually change the size of that no okay that's the first time I've ever seen it come out this big it might be part of a new software thing maybe that, but you can move it so you know that's kind of cool and then as far as scaling it there's probably some way to do that but that's adequate. I, oh, see now it changed the wheel. That's perfect. This is what I want. I can do it here. Or you double click this and it gives you the advantage to do it. Look at it that way so you can read it bigger. I get it. All right, so there's my wheel. Uh, let's get back into the coloring. Mm -hmm. My brain does meander a little bit. The problem with being a right brain, left brain guy is I get distracted until I get really absorbed into something. And sometimes it helps me to record and sometimes it doesn't. But uh, tonight I feel like recording. I want to add just the how I do some of the weirdness I do, how I get there. I don't know if anyone ever watches these. There's very few views. Because most people are trying to learn 3D software and I'm not a 3D guy, but I finally, I finally had an opportunity to get some uh, money squirreled away uh, during this COVID experience. I, my shop is not open. I'm not tattooing uh, because it's still dangerous in my opinion, and I want to be safe. And I'm still thinking about, you know, my area. That there's not a lot of cases. There's only been one death in the uh, in the three cities that are joined into what's called the Tri-County area where I'm at, Olympia, uh, Lacey, and Tumwater in Washington. So it's a, it's a beautiful area, and it just hasn't got here yet, the COVID. So uh, oddly enough, you know, when I walk, when I'm riding my bike, I, uh, I have my mask on and everything. I take it off when I'm riding by myself, but should I ever get near humans, I put my mask on and most people are not using their masks so uh, that is perturbing me a bit but you know everyone makes their choice now there we go that's looking pretty cool see so file save and this is how I do it I, I don't really you know a lot of people they get a specific way they go about it where it's the same same every time not me mm -mm. So now I'm looking at this, and I say, where would I like some cool rotational hinges or something? You know, and I want to be on the brush. And I have a touch off so I can rest my hand on it. I, if I leave touch on, <laughs> the most bizarre things happen. 
And uh, I know people wear gloves for that or something. But I've never got into the digital glove thing. I just, the idea of, you know, having to throw a glove on and draw just doesn't appeal to me at all. I know they look cool, and they were very fashionist, fashionable and stuff like that, but I never did that. It's just a gimmick to me. I don't think it does anything. Probably to help your computer if it's super sensitive when you touch it, because mine is hypersensitive. It's a fantastic sensitivity. So right there, we're, you know, I did some mechanical drawing when I was in high school. Many years ago, I took three classes in that, just give you a little background. So I do have some of that, and you know, I just think it out my way. Right now we're doing a black, we're on a layer that's messing around with stuff. So, uh, you know, if I turned it off, you could see. See, this is what we did so far. I'm gonna turn that back on. And then I kind of look at the things I do, because uh, of my spontaneous creation, I'm like looking at, uh, where I see a potential for a, a pivot or a joint or um, an optical illusion or something. So now I'm doing some line work after the fact, you see. So I have like these two little pinchers, which are the tarsus. And then I'm, instead of erasing, I'm putting black background over some of this just to uh, shape it. You can do it that way or you can use the eraser. I just thought I'd show you that. And then I might, you know, crimp in a little you know what I mean? I'm pinching something off the exterior of the illustration, the outside, and I could crimp into this socket, this joint. And I'm just calling it crimping in. You could call it anything you want. I, I'm making up a word, and then I'm explaining what the word means for you. Now I hear the police, <laughs> or a fire truck or something. So here we go. This July 4th has begun. And they typically, they don't like fireworks out here because uh, I live in an area of soldiers. There's a gigantic military base out here, the Joint Base lewis McCord, And it's about half an hour from me. And with people being in the military, uh, explosions is not the best thing. <laughs> Just gets them freaked out. And I totally understand that. So it's not much of it. And they probably just roll down to tell that guy, hey, cut that out, dude. <laughs> it's, the, it's the way it's supposed to be this year with uh, not much fireworks. I don't know. You can never tell what the laws are to you. Break them. <laughs> That's what I think in this world. It's like, you know, they just tell you, yeah, you broke a law. And it's like, well, I didn't know that was the law. And it's like, what well, is now? I'm like, well, dude, how am I supposed to keep track of all the things you invent? Luckily, I don't break any laws, but uh, I could see how that happens if you got a guy that wants to freak out on you. All right. So again, we're articulating all these shapes. I'm relaxing finally for my day. Uh, just so you know, the last about the last four days, really five days, I've had to deal with the uh, a laptop that was really uh, stuck in one of Windows situations called preparing automatic repair. And if you go to the internet, there's like a billion ways people tell you to fix that. There's over some of those websites that post solutions and try and sell you software, they got over five million views. So it's a situation. And the way I eventually solved it was I told myself, you know, instead of doing all these little tricks, none of them work. Uh, just go through the uh, agony of reloading Windows on and rebuilding your whole laptop which meant putting back all the applications. Um, and especially if you're self-employed, things like QuickBooks, they take two hours with someone on the phone to reinstall and, uh, you know, your artist apps. 
they take whatever time that takes. And then there's things like your email, and that doesn't get right, and then drivers, lots of drivers, and speakers, and the coordination of all that stuff that you had just right. <laughs> just tweaked, so happy. Uh, just goes out the window, down the toilet, or whatever you want to call it. Your SOL, as they say. Okay, so see how that's looking? That's looking pretty cool, right? You got this sort of a plant-like thing coming up, and it goes off screen, and then coming back on screen is this kind of a claw tarsus kind of a thing. And because it's my own invention, now that I have like a beautiful kind of an art form thing, uh, now we'll start getting into it. So, uh, we're going to add some highlights and shadows and other colors and relate it a little more to like the hummingbird and the drippy yellows and things. I'm just going to make it something cool. So you see the body has like oranges and reds and yellows and then it's being lit on top with some blues and some uh, whites. Typical, you know, lighting would be like, even though it's not under the sky, it's like when sky reflects. It makes light blues and... Uh, Naples yellows and things like that on top and then your bottom of course reflects the earth tones in the middle is the horizon line so I'm going to show you how to do some of that stuff because it's going to be kind of cool I'm going to go back old school and I'm going to put kind of a horizon line in and we're going to do another layer for that now so let's, let's uh, up the layer and then we're going to try something here. So right here, I'm going to put like a horizon line. See that real light and black right there? And we're going to do a little something, something. So above that, we're going to throw a little teal in just for fun. Even though this is not a sky here. Where it adds to... Um, we're going to keep it organic and fluid looking. But if I do a little bit of that, and then I come into here, grab a brown, put a little bit of a brown in there, below the horizon, which typically, if you were doing a, a wheel on a car or something, you would really show like a house in the background or a mountain or something. And then it, even though it takes the human eye a long time to adjust for that, your brain's adjusted for it and it understands what it's looking at even though you don't. So it's kind of cool. And then I'll look at that and I'll say, yeah, it's interesting, it's interesting. I like the influence of a little brown in this. So I'll drop some in, just uh, like that, see? And now it starts to get that chrome look even though I'm not making chrome. And then we'll, you know, mix it with the organic and and mysterious optical illusion type stuff. But this is kind of how I think. See, so if you watch something become three-dimensional that once was just a blur playing with the design. I don't really have any, you know, I think of this as like a slinky. I think of it as just strange stuff because I'm not in a hurry. I have lots of works in progress. I got lots of ideas. I haven't got much done because I was just hampered for about a month with my computer. It took like anywhere from an hour to three to four hours to get it up and running. And then I did the rebuild. It took me three days so far. And I am so glad, although it drove me crazy, to do it. Um, I'm proud of myself and that I made myself do it and I made myself learn again about all that. But, um, you know, it's a mysterious world. Mysterious world. So let's do it. Yeah, let's do a little, uh, let me hit a few buttons here. Let me, uh, let me save this as a frame. I like to show frames too. So we're going to export in Affinity Designer as a JPEG. 
I'm going to change the res so it's low, so because my files are just filling up this computer. And then I back it up on another computer, an external drive, and I do all that stuff. And, you know, it's just a tedious amount of stuff. So I have a new computer coming, by the way. I bought a desktop. And the desktop is going to be here uh, on the 9th, hopefully. And then we'll see if it sings, if I can get myself into a different groove because the motivation behind that is not to buy another computer for 10 years. <laughs> That's my motivation. Now, why? Because I'm working on the highest res monitor I can get. This is the Wacom Cintiq Pro, 24 inch. It's not the 30 inch, which is the max one, or the 32 inch, I guess. Maybe it's 32. There's only one bigger than this, which would be awesome to have if the world was normal and I could even try and do life drawing digitally right in, it would be so cool. But that didn't happen. So I have the 24 inch and that is the highest resolution I can get. But hooked up to my laptop, I only get 2K. So the new computer will have a chip in there uh, that will allow me to get 4K. And that's what I want and allow you to hook up at least, well, up to, I think, three monitors that way which typically I run my laptop with two monitors on it, but once I have a dedicated machine to art, and then I'm going to put an external drive that all the files will go to that, I'm going to stop filling up my machines with my garbage. Even when you erase it, it's still filling up your partitions and all that. You know, your takes up the space of the machine. So it should be an interesting experiment, you know, for me to live and learn. All the pros got their own ways, and I have, luckily, ArtStation, I sent a bunch of, well, not a bunch, I sent five, I think, or four, uh, emails out personally uh, as general emails to other artists and asked them their opinions on machines and what I should do. And uh, one guy replied, and, you know, he's more knowledgeable than me. He built his machine. And then that got me to study builds. But I'm afraid with a build that uh, I'm on the hook for it. You spend a lot less, you get a lot more. Except when it breaks, you're the guy that takes it apart and does it. It makes it more upgradable. So I found one that was more expensive, more powerful than the build, in my opinion. And uh, has now they make like ROG, which makes my laptop, uh, Republic of Gamers by Asus, they make great towers where you don't have to unscrew stuff. They just plug in and out of slots, and uh, there's a name for that, like an unscrew replacement or something. And I'm totally, totally into experimenting with that. So, all right, let's get this going again. Let's dial in some organic metallic look. We're doing a little bit. So now I'm going to show you the wonder of... Uh, Zooming in on this. This is detail time. Let me make a save. It's critical when you do your artwork, every artist knows, but in case a beginner is watching me, um, man, save every, every time you can think of it, literally. It doesn't hurt to save every minute, you know. You're not going to be happy if you lose it. So now I'm going to go to my uh, magnifier. I'm going to bring this up, see? You don't see any pixels. This is 2K. See how big that gets? Look at that. And if you look at the ruler at the top as this grows, you can see on the left 3.2525. So that large claw is only 1.75 inches, but on the computer now it's like 9 inches across. So. When I go to 4K, then the magnification is going to be off the hook, and my brain's going to be a detail freak times nine. I will be so into the minutia. And that will, of course, make me want to draw larger and larger and larger. You know, when you go to art school in the beginning, like high school and then college, 
uh, and I only have a two-year degree in art. Um, your teacher wants you to draw bigger, and you're always used to drawing on a little notepad when you before they had computers. That's how we did it all. We did it on notepads, little, you know, eight and a half by eleven, eleven fourteen, uh, eleven seventeen. You know, that was it. So when you got to draw and paint on a canvas, it's like intimidating as heck. And uh, now you can take something that's literally a quarter of an inch and blow it up to your entire monitor of 24 inches with the heavy resolutions. And what happens is, once you get past you know being intimidated by all this stuff, which believe me, I was as intimidated as anybody can get when I crossed over to digital six and a half years ago. Um, now that I'm there, because it took a different tool, I used to work on the Intuos Pro, no, yeah, the Intuos um, digital tablet. So Intuos Pro Medium, I believe is what they call it, now that my brain is thinking. Trying to remember my steps here so I don't mess up anything. Okay. And uh, that was great for the first six, first five years. But I just got so tired of, of looking at the monitor and drawing on a tablet uh, that I wasn't looking at. I was looking my face up at the screen and drawing on the tablet and That did not serve me well, as much as drawing directly on the tablet. And so any way you can get into that, I recommend it. Um, whatever works best for you. What's going on here? Let's do a save. And go back to the brush. And I like, when I do a dark black, I like to be in a, you know, a, a, a deep, I use the purple black. People use blue blacks. You can use all four colors. It's called a rich black. A rich black is when you use more than one color with your black. The black will be the darkest and they'll be underneath it, but they keep it from having a transparent look. It becomes much more opaque. And you see how I'm tapering this now. Okay. And I still have a slight fuzz to it. So now if I save that, let me just show you. And I go over to View. And then I go over to um, Zoom to Fit. You see that? But now you can see how crisp that is. And if I say to Scale, like View at 100, which is a 16 by 9 inches in the real world, that's how it would look. And so by going really large and then bringing it down, you get that nice crisp look, which I so am enamored by. I love it. So we're just using the hand and we're using our magnifier. See how big that bird's head is now? <laughs> Thing's so tiny in there. This is where you can go crazy. But this is where you really develop your skills. So now I'm making my optical illusions like a dent or something that's not a dent or it looks like a dent or it's organic looking or it's going to be sharp like a metal. Because my entity has total control over the formation of itself. It is a multiverse being and to me the multiverse being that I imagine is 100% control of its form. And they say form follows function in design. So if you design a toaster motor, you have the function, and then someone has to design the skin for that or how it looks in the store when you buy it in your living room. You know, color red, it's got a nice bump here, it's got a shape for the knob and all that stuff. So form follows function. So same thing when I draw. I'm thinking of, you know, it's going to pinch, it's going to grab, but before it becomes metallic-like, maybe it's a soft, fuzzy, um, uh, 
it's a thought in its head and then it makes the thought visible and so uh, a lot of things like liquid solid gas will play have an influence in my art and I'm not so much critical about you know the color wheel I do follow the color wheel like everybody does you know what I mean you have your primaries and your secondaries and your tertiaries and your uh, opposites and complementaries and all that I do but a lot of times I break that rule just because this is my style. You know, my style is provocative in its own way. And somebody may say, well, you still you should follow the rules. And, uh, you know, let somebody can say that. But then their art doesn't look like this. And this is the way I want my art to look and function. And I just haven't gotten an audience. If I had a person that knew how to promote me, a distributor that knows which part of the world they buy things that look like what I make, I would be doing just fine. Because I am content to sit and work, bike ride, exercise, eat good, just chill. I've learned to live with less and less humans. <laughs> as we all do, and had my, you know, because I'm older, I had a family and all that, so at some point in time, you're done with that, quite honestly. You value your privacy. And when you get squirrely, you go outside. That's all, it's that simple. If you hike and you bike and you're into nature like my am, then it doesn't matter what's going on. It could be pouring rain, and you'll say, well, I'm gonna just going to put on my rain gear and walk in a forest for an hour just in the pouring rain and listen to the rain drip off the trees and make strange noises and um, be by myself because most people aren't doing that. And you find little, you know, close enough locations where you can get there and back in less than an hour and get out for an hour and you know so you kill three hours or so of your day which is not really killing it it's enjoying that and uh, so I do that in the winter right now in the summer I ride my bike I work out in the garage I suggest everybody keep their health up you know we're artists but we're also uh, you gotta keep your health up in this particular time you're living in more so than you ever did and of course all artists because they get beat up when they're young <laughs> they all become martial artists so I did you know lots of martial arts when I was young and I'm sure you're doing that now but now we got this thing going on see and you can't get to a gym and so you gotta build the gym you gotta be your gym you gotta jimmy up and I'm looking at this see now it's getting colorful it's getting interesting And, uh, you know, I might even, I could even reflect the other claw into this. But let's just, uh, let's save that. That's a pretty good looking picture there. Let me try to save that. And there could be hairs on this, so, you know, I'll, uh, I'll dial up a little bit more on the bottom one. And I'm going to keep this separate now, so I'm going to go to another layer. I don't have to label these because you just turn them off and on. I do sometimes for a video, but... Okay, so now I can see if I turn this one off, you can see everything we did while you're watching me. Boom, boom, boom. And it's not in the struck. Meaning you can edit. That's all it means. You can edit it. You have a safe way into editing. And you don't have to go back... So, like, if all this was one file, like a JPEG, you know, flat, you'd be hard-pressed to change the background or anything. I could take the background that's black and change it to another color. Now, I painted over that with, uh, <laughs> with black instead of erasing, which sort of gummed up that whole theory. But not a big deal, because if I change the background, let's just do that for fun. Uh, we'll go to the background, we'll put another layer over that. Like that, and then if I did a fill, for instance. Let's see here. There we go. 
And if I did a fill with a color, say like teal, you'll see where the black is going to show where I did that instead of erasing. But because it shows like that, I can just erase it out. It's not a big deal. And sometimes it's a cool effect, so it's kind of comic book looking. There's different things you do when you mess around, you know? So I can turn that layer off. Or I can throw it away. And since I know what I'm doing, I'll just, uh, I might just leave it in there. Yeah, because I can go back and put a bloom between the two or something. So, there you go. Some little tricks. But if you use your eraser and you, and you subtract, you take away the art on the outside, on the perimeter or something, the, the, the outer border of it, instead of drawing black, then there's nothing there when you erase. And so when you change the color of your background, or you could even move in the whole cityscape, um, it'll show up just fine behind everything. So if you drew this all on one layer is what I was getting at. If you compress this into a JPEG and start it over, you couldn't edit. So it's always important to do the best you can to uh, keep your layers separate. So I'll make this finger, you know, this thing a little bit different here. And, uh, you know, you dial your brush. You can see I've got my opacity set at 54, my flow at 12, zero hardness. I don't really like adding hardness at all unless I'm erasing and I want everything all at 100 so it removes everything. But I, I typically have my hardness at zero on that drawing. And your opacity would be your paint in an airbrush, and the flow would be the air. So if you think of that, and then your finger, when you press down and pull back, uh, you know, how far you push that plunger down when you were a traditional airbrush was your hardness. And when you pull that lever backward and forward, that makes the air and the pigment. So it takes a while to make the brain think of that digitally. It did for me. But I totally get it, you know, and I totally understand what I'm doing. I may not draw the way you want to see me draw, but uh, believe me, there's a traditional background behind all this. It's just that when you get to your... To be different than all the people of the earth before you, 100% impossible. It looks like you're gleaning their stuff and incorporating their stuff in a way you are a lot. And still, if you have a, a mental uh, process of why you're doing something, you can articulate it as well as draw it. And that's important if you're describing your art to another person. I love art, obviously. I'm lost in my own world. This is kind of how I intended to spend the rest of my life. You know, when I got old, I just wanted to do art for art's sake 100%. And, uh, you know, these can be like interior lights. They can be anything. You, I, I try and suggest things without... Uh, super defining them so that they're kind of confusing. People say, well, what is it? Is it a light? Is it a fuzzy thing? Is it a, you know, what is that exactly? And that's important. And then I'll throw in an optical illusion, of course, where I, the back looks like it's coming to the front, the side is turning into the side of the other back. And just, you know, mixing and matching and playing. On this. So you can only erase like on the level you're supposed to be on. So if it's not erasing on the level you're on, which is a, you know, I'm on like on the big, it's behind everything. So we look at this, you go all the way back to like this layer. And then when you erase, it takes away everything that you see. And if it doesn't, you go to another layer and you're erasing. And you can even turn your layers off and on like this till you find things, you know. See, now it's still holding that disc. 
crazy, man. Crazy. What's going on in this guy's brain? Okay. So just... Everything seems to be running pretty good, pretty smooth, pretty quiet. You see when the fire truck came down there, they kind of said, no fireworks, you guys. Cut that out. We're not having it this weekend. <laughs> Even though it's the 4th of July, we don't, homie, well, we don't play that here. <laughs> okay, back up to there. Be on the right layer. So making things recede, making things come forward, typical artist tricks, light colors come forward, dark colors recede, large shapes come forward, small shapes recede. Uh, you know, pointy things and other things and all kinds of things. And now I'll do a save and let's look at this at, at the proper size. So we'll go view at a hundred. Oh uh, yeah, and let's position that. So we'll view it. Um, what they call that? Zoom to fit. There you go. And see now that's looking pretty cool. It looks almost like the piece that's on the screen, the vertical, is separate from the top. But we'll tie that in together. I'll extend those points. And there could be something coming off the one that's right up against the border, you know, that extends out. But now, we're going to reflect a little bit of his head into that uh, tarsus. And, uh, you know, eventually I'll put some hairs on this and so on. Let me uh, just check the time of the video. Right now we're at 47. I'll make this one an hour long. So, uh, let's magnify. It seems to be going quite well. So now I'm just going to go that big, and you see the head has got like a greenish, and it's yellow and a white. So to make it look like it's reflecting into that, that will give you... It could be the other way around. The hand could be reflecting into the head. The head could be reflecting into the hand. It's up to me. And what that does is give you a sense of where it is in space. You know, is it directly above it or what? So if I throw a little white uh, on this curve, uh, get to the white of the head, see like that, just a little bump, and uh, you know, just a little shape like so. Oh, we got fifty percent. Okay, like that. And um, clean that. A little bit dark, just like so. Um, I'm going to go up even a layer here. I like to do that sometimes. I'm going to darken that whole thing right around it with good black now really to make this kind of a mind warp I could reflect the bird into it from far away so without let me say this without um, drawing the whole head of the bird, you put like a color that suggests the bird, you know? So the bird's head is that, like, uh, you know, rainbow. But say going forward on the head, it's like an orange, right? So I might, I might put just like a little orange in there, like that, and then extend the beak, like with the, uh, just suggesting the beak, like with this fuchsia, like that, you know, there might be some kind of a, a large, like the body, you know, a wing or something there, you can see from far away like that, so it just kind of suggests, um, stuff happening, see, like that, and then, 
nothing, nothing too heavy. And I don't want to just, just enough to create the illusion that you're seeing something, maybe, but you don't know what it is, do you? That's the idea. So we do a little spot of that, and then the super light green. We'll get into that like way up here, and just do a little fuzz line like that and then I can erase outside I can erase outside be careful see it takes away the blacks and then you gotta put the black back down uh, gotta be on the brush there we go and so it has kind of a suggestion and then to make sure it's in, inside the chrome feel, you can throw a white highlighter popcorn over that right in the edge. Say like that, you know. Just a hot spot. And then where it's close to the surface down here, maybe another hot spot or something. And then some black down there. Yeah, and then I'll put like a super light teal and brown in here somehow. So I'll like come across, just maybe, I'm going to get the brown up in there. So I'll rotate this until I find a nice brown hidden in between the orange and the red, like maybe up there. A rich brown. Just kind of define that arm better. Like that. And. some orange flex and then we'll just see what it looks like you know it doesn't it doesn't have to make sense but it has to suggest something is being reflected and that rich blue will really trick it out so I put just a fuzz of that dark blue in there remind with a little green under that, saying, wow, it's the bird distorted or something wrapped around the, could it be chrome and organic and metal and everything all at once? Well, let's see. So let's save that, file save, and then shrink it to view actual. And these are optical tricks, you know, you may not agree with them, zoom to fit. See, now your mind, it plays with your mind. Like you think you're, you know, after you say, oh, it's a reflection. That's all your mind says, it's a reflection. It doesn't think it's part of the organic nature of it. But it's just a little trick, see? So it looks kind of cool. I like it. All right. Let's move down a little bit now. It's looking really sweet. I'm going to make sure I save that. And if you, if you think, even though you saved it, you might have done something after it, it'll tell you you should save, so. You're good. If you're paranoid, you go save as, and you hit save, and it says, well, you already saved it. Do you want to do it again? You go, yeah, okay. It's that easy. So experiment, you know, what helped me was doing a daily sketch every day for a year, in the year 2017 to 2018. I made sure I did at least 365 illustrations that year. Some days I skipped, some days I did three, one day I'd do an hour, one day I'd do three hours, one day I did 20 minutes, whatever. But I did daily sketch for 365 days. And I did animal, vegetable, mineral, and I copied photorealistic and abstract and, uh, you know, just picked out a thing by de Kooning or picked out a thing by Picasso or picked out something by another guy or picked out something by Gauguin to add in. Or. And so you get into that too. You get that thinking back like when you're in high school. Because our teachers would give us, remember this is before the internet, so the teacher would say, I want you to paint a picture like a famous artist painted it, but he used the techniques of another artist. 
So one of my paintings I had to do, I did it in chalk, I did it in Conti crayon actually, was uh, painting a Picasso as though Picasso was using Gauguin's techniques. <laughs> and that is one heck of a mental exercise. It's great, you know, or Cezanne's techniques or something like that. You know, Cezanne would push all the, everything in a room up to, you would imagine the room was inside a framed piece of glass and he pushed all the objects towards the glass. If you study Cezanne, for instance. I think I did Gauguin painting like Cezanne. That's what I did, yeah. And man, that will give you just off the hook skill for certain things. You know, in the real world painting. And then here, you see, I'm doing this kind of stuff where I dial it in. So the end of the this tarsus arm is going to be the most focused part and the closest to the viewer. So this has like a hinge that's slightly bent towards the people up front, like us. <laughs> And then this is just, uh, you know, it is what it is. I have no idea. They look like wires. They look like lights. They look like... <clears throat> the reason I say they look like wires, they look like lights, this is what ancient humans probably saw from our makers that crafted the planet Earth. You know, they set everything in motion. If you were a caveman, and you saw something like this, now follow me, if you saw something like this, and you emulated it, you made it the best way you could, you may end up with a wire. But it wasn't a wire. That's what I'm saying. This was like an organic being of the multiverse or something. Now I'm making this up like a science fiction writer, okay? But you get my drift. It's like you saw something, but you didn't actually see what you thought you saw, but you replicated it with the skill set and the ability of the animal that you are to do it the way the makers made you love it love it love it love it love it love it super cool super cool man you can hear the in the background people uh, playing music across the street I hope I don't get trouble for that, you know, somebody's got that going in the background, and sometimes YouTube can recognize those things, and then they tell you, dude, we can't put that up there, some guy's got a lawsuit against you, <laughs> you got that playing in the background, it's like, no, I don't, somebody else does across the street, and it's coming through my glass, it's so loud. All right, let's save that. And now you see how it's starting to look like armor. And so, you know, with the armor, I did like the martial arts and I did, uh, you know, some, uh, studied a lot of Japanese armory, armor, and then that led me into sword collecting and suba collecting when I was younger, which I just, in the last, I'd say it's been about two years that I didn't own anything now. I sold off all my swords, I sold off my subas, I sold off manukis, I sold off anything I had to raise cash. As an artist, when times are tight, or if I want to buy something, or I want to do something. You know, I'm always manipulating my stock of whatever's left into something else. And usually when you sell off a ton of stuff, you get some, one item that's expensive. And then that item, if you hang on to that, you know, you buy a right item, you can always sell that. So it's, a, it's, it's sorcery. It's manipulating, you know, making uh, something out of nothing. I love doing that. I'll do it with everything. So we're just about at the 60-minute mark. Let's save that. And did I say that? Yeah, I did. And now we're going to um, view this at actual size, zoom to 100. 
and we're going to make it fit on the screen. Zoom to fit. And there we go. And now we hit 100. Let's see. View. Zoom. 100%. There we go. And if I take the hand and move it, you can kind of see what's going on there. This would be actually if it was 16 inches by 9 inches. Look at the rulers. See, there's the 9. will fit on the screen. 16 is a little bit big. So when you say zoom to fit, what it does is it brings it up as big as it can, and then whenever the length or the width reaches the box, it stops, right? So if you do zoom to fit, like view, zoom to fit, <coughs> they got that, but when you do um, zoom to width, now it'll that a little harder. It should expand that up. Let's see. Zoom. Let's see. Zoom to width. It didn't move. Zoom to 200. It moved. Now, zoom to width. Okay. So apparently it's adjusted itself to that. But that's it. It's a wrap. Let's make sure we saved it. We did. And we're going to also save this as a JPEG. We'll put the JPEG with the picture. So we'll go uh, File, Export. And I have a lot of these steps in between, which is cool. So I'm going to make this 1,000. Click the one next to it. It adjusted appropriately. Hit Export. Hit the most recent one. I'm up to 14. And then I change that 14 to a 5. So I go like this. Stop that. Okay. So I'll do it with my mouse. Sometimes it just acts funky with a, a digital pen. So if you do it with your mouse, you're good. Team like that. Save it. Kabam. Have a good evening.